A sun-baked crowd at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, awaiting the Clemson Tigers versus the Georgia Bulldogs. The Georgia Bulldogs and Coach Vince Dooley. He is a graduate of the University of Auburn. But while here at Georgia, he has won 162 games to become the ninth winningest active coach in major college football. On the other side of the field, Danny Ford, a graduate of Alabama. 47 wins, 11 losses, two ties. He's the fourth winningest active coach in the NC2A, but he's never won a game here at Sanford Stadium, Kim McQuilkin. Well, that's exactly right. He's favored here this afternoon, Art, but as we mentioned at the top of the show, Clemson has only won one game here in its last 16 tries, so they've got their hands full. Clemson won the opening toss. They declined the decision for the first half. Georgia has elected to receive. So it, Donald Igwe Buike will be kicking off with the wind at his back. It's true that the series is 34 wins for Georgia, 13 wins for Clemson, and four ties. But from 1915 through 1973, Georgia had a 21 1 and 2 advantage. But since then, things have certainly tightened up. Donald Igwe Buike with Fred Lane and Andre Smith back to receive Igwe Buike doing a great job in kickoffs once again this year. It's Freddie Lane to the near side and Andre Smith to the far side. Igwe Buike puts the toe to it. Andre Smith going back into the end zone too deep to run out. They'll take over at the 20-yard line. First and 10, Georgia at their own 20. The Georgia offense, as Kim told us in the opening, very, very inexperienced. Todd Williams is one of the few with some game experience as he comes in at quarterback. An inexperienced line anchored by the sometime starter in 1983, Peter Anderson at center. You see him there. Williams at quarterback. Inexperienced running backs, Lane and Archie, experienced receivers, however. That's Lane in motion. And the pitch back goes to Mangrum. Mangrum stacked up short of the 20-yard line. Steve Berlin getting off the pack. 16, now they make it 15 tackles this year, three of them for loss. And one sack on the season, the 6'5 junior from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. The defensive lineups now for the Clemson team. Outland Trophy candidate William Perry flanked by Berlin and brother Michael. Wells at left end. The bandit is Terrence Mack and the linebackers Walls and Milton, Davis, Watson, Danforth, and Pleasant, the defensive secondary. Mangrum on the carry. Penalty flagged down as he tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. So far, the Clemson line has bottled things up, Kim. Well, that's exactly right. Danny Ford at the beginning of this season was concerned about his defensive line. Very early in the season, they have dominated play. Here we see William Perry fighting off the block of the center. Great pursuit by this Clemson defense. Nowhere to go outside. Ball carrier's got to turn it up. Look at all those white jerseys there, Art. So it'll be a second down and 20 yards for the Georgia Bulldogs. Peter Anderson over the ball at center. That's Andre Smith. Andre Smith can't hit the hole quick enough. As Jeff Wells, who gets his 12th tackle of the year, secures it for the Clemson Tigers. He's a three-year veteran, this Jeff Wells. We mentioned that we felt the kicking game would be a big factor in this ball game. Along with that, Art, is field position. Vince Dooley's got an inexperienced quarterback in there. Second and 20, didn't want to try anything fancy. Now he's got a third and 18. And I'm sure he's going to be very careful as to his play selection early in this game. Archie split to the far side, and Osborne is in the slot. He's the man in motion right now. Third and long yardage, penalty flag in the air. Looks like it might be a delay of game. So the Bulldogs backing themselves in a corner. And this is a, a call you see quite a bit when one team is on the far end of the field. The plays have to be sent in from the sideline. Some takes it. Sometimes it takes a while to get in there. They're going to be backed up to their six-yard line now. 15 yards and penalties marched off against Georgia here in the opening series of plays. I would be very surprised to see anything but a very conservative call here. Lane and Archie to the near side for the Georgia Bulldogs.
Mangrum. He stopped by Jeff Wells. And all Vince Dooley was trying to do here was get some room for his punter to come in. Dooley's punter is Chip Andrews. He had three punts in the opening game of the year, averaging 47.3. He and Hatcher, the punter for Clemson, who's ranked Reggie ninth Pleasant, in the country, should the senior put from on quite a show South today. Carolina is back in the 48-yard line. Andrews out of his end zone. Oh, beautiful hang time on this one. Pleasant goes back. He'll have time to catch it at the 35. Does the next best thing, just go straight up the field. And the Clemson Tigers take over with good field position after a tackle by David McCluskey. What a, what a great punt by Andrews back in his own end zone. He really came through. Clemson offense. As you see Mike Epley going into the huddle. Engel, Reese, Swing, Cheatham, Ellis. KD Dunn, the fine tight end. Epley at quarterback. Flowers at fullback. Stacy Driver starting as he comes back to his home state of Georgia. Rulak and Butler are the wideouts. Epley goes to the air on the first play, but his receiver fell down. Epley, the great athlete he is, now is taking time. Intended for Williams. And it was batted out of bounds by Kevin Harris. Well, Harris, a player that came over from the offensive side of things because of weakness in depth in the cornerback spot, Kim. Well, that's right. And here you see Epley letting the ball go a little late. He wanted to go to his right originally. All the receivers were covered, trying to make something happen. He came back to his left, and a good job by the Georgia defense that time. Epley, as you see there, number one in the nation in pass efficiency. Boyer and Williams are the wideouts. Stacy Driver gets the call, and he breaks off the pack. First down and more. Out of bounds at the 44. Tony Flack forces him out there. The Georgia defensive line is anchored by Kenny Sims from Greenville, South Carolina. 13 tackles last year in one game against Auburn. Lloyd Chumley Harris complimenting Sims. The linebackers, Cole Pepper, is all SEC. Mitchell and Lil. And Sanchez, the leader in that secondary. Behind the cornerbacks, they have walk-ons for experience. First and 10 from the 47. Epley to Stacy Driver. First down, and more as he goes down about the 29. Andy Loy from the left end spot making his fifth tackle of the year. Loy's from Knoxville, Tennessee, a 6'1", 214 junior. And on the last two plays, Art, Clemson has been exploiting the short side of the football field. This time, Epley on the option, looking right at that defensive end, lets it go, and Driver's got the outside. Look at him go down the sideline. Stacy Driver, second carry, 29 yards on this first series of plays. Boyer is to the far side, and Rulak comes to the near side. First and 10. Stacy Driver in motion, right up the middle. Getting to the 25-yard line, a gain of about four and a half yards is Kenny Flowers. Flowers comes into this game with 21 carries for a total of 87 yards. That's a 4.1 average. And Clemson using a wing formation. They're actually putting the wingman in motion, which turns it into a one-back offense, similar to a, what we see quite a bit in the NFL. There's that wingback now lined up right. Second and six now for the Tigers. Epley looks back over the middle to Williams. Williams is piled down at the 17-yard line. It should be good enough for the first down. It is. It's Butler, the receiver on the play, and he's met by Bill Mitchell, number 56. Now, this is the same play they tried the first play of the game. Epley's going to sprint left. He wants to throw the throw back back to his right. This time he's got his man wide open underneath the coverage, and it's good enough for a first down. Clemson with a diversified, very versatile offense, showing it in this first drive. Boyer and Williams, the wideouts. Williams is to the far side. First and 10 from the 17-yard line. Epley on the option back to Driver. Oh, as he hits solidly that time at the 15-yard line by Tony Flack. Flack from Greensboro, North Carolina. He's a junior, but with two years of varsity experience. Flack that time was a support man, and he was up there to make the tackle early. 
Culpepper calling the defensive signals there in the huddle for the Georgia Bulldogs out of Lovett High School in Atlanta. The big rap on him was he wouldn't have enough speed to be a collegiate linebacker, but don't tell Georgia fans that. He's all SEC. Second and eight in the open, done. Touchdown! What a beautiful play call, Kim McClurkin. What a great individual effort by KD Dunn to get into the end zone. Epley just took three steps and uh, hit Dunn over the middle, and he dragged the rover, Little, right into the end zone with him. Check out the action now. As Little tries all he can do at 6'2", 194 pounds, he's only a sophomore, to haul the big guy down. As we saw, Epley didn't even get set. He just let that ball go and done with a fine individual effort. Big boy Buike now, trying to keep that perfect record intact. He's 12 out of 12 and making 13 out of 13 with 10 minutes and 33 seconds to be played here in the first quarter. Clemson on their first possession scores and leads this ball game 7 to nothing. We'll be back with more action right after this. Another look at the touchdown play. The pass, Epley to KD Dunn. 31, our correction is Sanchez. Sanchez out all last year with an injury. Cannot handle a tight end one-on-one. -on -one. Now when you've got a tight end that big and that close to the end zone, that's a tough play for the safety. What, Clint, what Georgia did not do in that play, Art, is hold up Dunn at the line of scrimmage. Andre Smith and Fred Lane deep to receive the kickoff from Edward Buike. The drive going 58 yards in eight plays. One minute, 56 seconds there. You see time of possession. Epley to Dunn for the 16-yard scoring pass. 7-0 Clemson. Igwe Buike, his second try at a non-returnable. Freddie Lane says, no, I'm not going to run it out. Wisely so. First and 10, Georgia, in their second possession here in the first quarter from their own 20-yard line. So Donald Igwe Buike right now, as we see him on the sideline, receiving congratulations, has nine unreturnable kickoffs in 14 tries. Last season's total offensive figures as Todd Williams brings him to the line of scrimmage, first and 10. Williams looking for Archie, lost the ball, intercepted by Watson. Ronald Watson. Penalty flag goes down. Watson playing that perfectly. That's his first interception of the year. The young man from Jefferson, Georgia. Well, Todd Williams, the Georgia quarterback, tried to roll to the short side of the field and throw a go pattern down the sideline. But when you're going into that short side of the field, you cannot hang the ball. Todd here Williams. We'll, here we'll see Todd. He puts a lot of air under the ball, and that allows Ronald Watson to come over and make the play. The penalty is going to go against Clemson. That's right, they won't take over the football at that point where Watson returned the interception because the clipping call goes back to the 46-yard line. Well, One we very did. irate customer on the Clemson team as he left the field was William Perry, but we don't have official confirmation as to who the clip was on. But Clemson, with better field possession than they started the last time. From the 46-yard line, Williams goes into the slot, the handoff. And it's Flagler. Flagler, a gain of a couple of yards. Terrence Flagler has not lost a yard this year. He's done a terrific job in 16 carries for 126 yards coming into this game. That's a 7.9 average. Linebackers Mitchell and Culpepper in to make the stop for Georgia after a gain of make it three yards, second and seven. Epley continuing his great pass efficiency in the first drive, hit two for three. Now he sends Charleston to the far side and Ray Williams to the near side. Epley to the air. That's an eligible receiver as Carlisle Hewitt.
was looking for his fourth tackle and first sack of the season, but couldn't get it. Well, the fans don't like it. They're looking for the intentional grounding call. Here we see the play action pass to Flagler. Epley keeps the ball and continues to roll out, but George is doing a good job deep in the secondary. Not no only that, uh, Kim, but Flagler could not get through the blockers in time to get into the pattern. But well, we've got a big play here, third and seven, Art. Third down, seven. Butler, far to the uh, right side, and Williams to the near side. Epley against the four-man rush. Going long to Williams, intercepted by Sanchez. Sanchez, two years ago, was second in the nation in interceptions, only behind teammate Terry Hogue. Well, that's exactly right. Last year, Sanchez was out all year with a broken arm. Epley's got time. He lets it go, but he throws it into the coverage. Sanchez has time to come over. That's the first interception in something like 35 straight passes for Epley. Well, we talked about field position. So far, it's been all Clemson. Up the middle, no room at all. 7-0 Clemson, 9.22 remaining first quarter. You know, in that time, Art, I think Todd Williams fumbled the snap from center. George is lucky they didn't turn the ball over on that play. Osborne comes into the lineup. Now, Art, this is a real tough situation for an inexperienced quarterback playing against one of the top teams in the country deep in his own territory. You know the butterflies have to be going just a little bit. Second down and ten. Williams. Low throw to Archie. Archie was in the open. It looked like he just held onto the football too long on the delivery. Well, he's rolling to his left. He needs to get those shoulders square to the line of scrimmage before he lets the ball go. I think he's probably a little tight. Archie was open on a curl pattern, and he was coming back to the ball, which is you want to, which is what you want the receiver to do. But Todd let it go just a bit too early, pulled the string on it. They've got a third and ten. Williams 0 for 2 in the passing department. Don't forget, though, he engineered those two drives last year in the fourth quarter to tie the game at 16-16. Look out, Terrence Mack, back at the four-yard line. Mack with 12 tackles, two interceptions. He had a great year last year with 39 tackles as a freshman. Watch him blast through. Well, Clemson does something here they normally won't do early in the game. They gambled. They sent Terrence Mack. They came up, played a tight man-to-man -man defense, a pressing defense, and they were relying on the pass rush. That time, Terrence Mack, the bandit, got in and got the sack. A big sack for Clemson. Reggie Pleasant is deep. He's run back eight punts for 64 yards, 17 yards his longest. And look at Andrews with his back foot on the back line. Only one man really penetrating, and a nice hanging high punt. Fair catch called for, but they wouldn't give him room to catch it. And the penalty flag will go down. You got to give him room. Wave for the fair catch, and Kenny Driscoll wouldn't let him have it, a junior from Macon, Georgia. Well, Clemson really wanted this return, too. Even though Andrews was in the back of the, in the, back of the end zone, Clemson elected not to rush the, the punter. They peeled everybody back. They had the return on, but didn't even get a chance to catch the ball. Well, that'll get him some good yardage, though, with the say, mistake on the penalty. Look at the field position Clemson is going to take over with. So Georgia, who has fallen victim to the penalty department here in the first quarter, will have to defend from the 27. Richard Butler in at split end. Ray Williams, your flanker. Steve Griffin is the tailback, moving back into the eye as Dunn shifts to the right side of the line. Epley hands to Griffin. Griffin tries to knife through. Yellow flag down at the 25. Donald Chumley made the tackle. He had a fine first game against Southern Mississippi with eight tackles, a sack, also deflecting a pass. And whenever you see that flag in the middle of the line of scrimmage, you've got to think holding. That's what it's going to be. We've got a holding call against Clemson. Danny Ford doesn't like it. Griffin goes back to the tailback spot. Fake the flowers. KD Dunn. 
Booms his way past Flack, but he was down after the fumble. Inside the 10-yard line, Jeff Sanchez making the tackle. Epley got hit hard. There's no question about that with the rush. Well, Epley's going to fake the dive to Flowers. He pulls up right away. The looky pass, and there you see him getting hit. But what George is not doing, Art, is they are not holding up KD Dunn at the line of scrimmage. They've got to put a linebacker in his face and not let him get off the ball because he's no match for those safeties downfield. Epley, three for six for 49 yards. Henry Harris was the young man from the left guard position that came through to really put the snap on the quarterback. First and goal. Nine yards to go. Good tackle at the line of scrimmage on Kenny Flowers. Once again, it was Henry Harris. He got help from Knox Culpepper. Henry Harris is an interesting story. He went to his high school coach, Columbia High School in Atlanta, Georgia, said, Coach, I don't know how to read, and I want to go to college. And he saw a lot of other gentlemen around them uh, getting college scholarships from that school. And uh, Ray Bonner, the coach there, the uh, principal, got him in a special academic program, and he even came to Georgia a semester early. He graduated early from high school. Griffin on the carry, very little running room as he tries to inch his way to the five-yard line on the second and goal. Andy Loy making the tackle and Jeff Sanchez helping out. This is, of course, where the yardage gets tough inside that 10-yard line. We've got a third and six now from the six. Butler brings the play into the huddle. The great thing about having Epley in there at quarterback guard is you can roll out, you can run the option, you can run the pass. He can do it all. The Bulldogs stack in now with 6.03 remaining first quarter. Epley going to the air to the lob. Williams can't get to it. He hit the corner of the end zone, but Williams just couldn't get to it. Tony Flack on the coverage. Well, when you have man-to-man -man coverage, a good call sometimes is what we call a step and go in the pros. The receiver just takes one step at that defender, then out to his outside. Epley, it's a timing pass, wants to try to put it over his outside shoulder. That time, Mike just lofted the ball a bit too much. And Clemson's going to have to settle for a field goal. Igwe Buike is three for three in the field goal department, as long as 49. But this one will have a ball placement at the 12. It's up and powers it out of the stadium. Igwe Buike puts three more on the board, and Clemson with 5.53 remaining in the first quarter. Leads the University of Georgia by the score of 10 to nothing. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Welcome back to Stanford Stadium. With 12.44 remaining in the half, Georgia place kicker Kevin Butler has put the Bulldogs on the scoreboard with a 35-yard field goal. The score is now 10-3 Clemson as we move ahead. Six minutes, 15 seconds remains in the half, and Georgia has possession first down and 10 near midfield here on ESPN Classic. Bulldogs take over at the 45 with Tate at tailback. Smith is the fullback. It goes to Tate. Nice cutback. Jeff Wells got just enough of a hit to throw him off balance. Tate's a quick runner. He's a freshman. A high school All-American came into the ballgame. 11 carries, 31 yards, and one touchdown. And a nice cutback that time. Georgia running into the short side of the field. Tate cut it back up for good yardage. Tate has a good combination of power and speed. 4-5 speed. But this time, he's got caught around the ankles by Tyrone Davis. A loss on the play. Tyrone Davis gets great penetration here. It's a toss sweep. And look at Davis in the backfield. Nowhere for Tate to go that time. Four carries, 22 yards for Tate. And it'll be second and 12 from the 36-yard line. Meadows flanks Perry to the right. Todd Williams taking it himself and the bandit Terrence Mack. With and this, the high tackle out of bounds. And this is a broken play. Williams wanted to pitch this ball to his left. 
Someone's out of position, nowhere to go. He does the right thing, tucks it up and gets what he can. Ten to three, Clemson. Four fifty-eight, second quarter. Third down and ten from the thirty-four. Williams has Tate, and he gets it to him at the thirty, and can't hold on. A vicious hit by Keith Williams. Twelve tackles this year, and that's got to be his best. Well, Keith Williams really baited Lars Tate. Anton Williams. He was standing right in front of Tate, just waiting for him to throw the ball. Left him open enough. So Williams might throw the ball to him, and here he comes. Puts the helmet right on the ball. That's the way it's supposed to be done. So Kevin Butler, as you see there, number five, getting set to try his third field goal of the ball game. He's one for two so far. The ball placement at the 41-yard line. This is not a chip shot. He's proven to have the leg before. Let's see if he can get the 51 yarder. It's up. If it's straight, it's good. It is good. Kevin Butler comes through. A 51 yard field goal. Well, earlier, Kim, we said the kicking game would play a big part, and that's certainly been the case so far. Well, 51 yards, and the ball still made it into the end zone stands, too. What we expected, a great ball game here in Athens, Georgia. Clemson 10 to 6 over Georgia with 445 remaining before halftime. Butler's 50 yard field goal capped an 11 yard drive and four plays. 116 elapsed on the clock. The biggest yardage maker for the Bulldogs, penalties against the Tigers to put their backs to the wall and eventually punt. So Butler puts it out. On the sideline. There's no way they could return that. If it bounced out the sidelines, it would go to the 20. But right. it went out on the fly. Right. They're bringing that out to the 30. 445 remaining second quarter. Clemson with the football at the 30 yard line. First and 10. Clemson leading at only 10 to 6. Epley hands to Flagler. Nice defensive adjustment that time. Close in yardage with Georgia 94 yards. Clemson 103. Clemson has a good 50% game really going for them in 49 passing yards. And 45 rushing, whereas Georgia's picked up most of their yards on the ground. Second down and eight from the 32. Epley hesitates, pitches back to Flagler. Flagler, beautiful move on Sanchez. Flagler down to the 30-yard line. Calvin Ruff finally making the stop, having to come all the way from the left end spot. What a great move by that young man. And a great block by number 40, Henry Carter, the fullback. We'll see it right here. He kicks out the cornerback. And the great move there by Flow. Oh, what a move. Flagger's 52nd yard and three carries. You mentioned Henry Carter's block, Kim. He was the ACC Rookie of the Week against Virginia, mainly because of his blocking. Five knockdown blocks. Up the middle this time on a first and 10 from the 30-yard line and almost, well, make it the 24-yard line. A pickup of four yards on the play. Lovelace made the tackle. Well, Carter that time put Tony Flack, the left cornerback, in the nickel seats. He came right back on this play with another fine block. Second down and six now for the Tigers. Stacy Driver at tailback. Still Carter at fullback. taken out but someone was left free and it was Hewitt Carlisle Hewitt driver looked like he had an initial opening that time as Knox Culpepper number 48 was picked up blitzing 
But then somebody has to go free. Well, Carter and Culpepper met in the background. Henry Carter, 6'3", 215. Culpepper, 6'1", 219. That time, he got the best of it. They've got a third and seven. And that's from the 27-yard line. Epley goes back, looks for the long throw. Gets it to number 33. That's Flegler. Terrence Flegler, touchdown. Epley's been able to do that all year long so far. Now in the third game of the season, he's been able to unload long. Well, this is the throwback. Epley's going to roll to his left. Now what they had been doing is have Flagler hook up on this play, but this time he's got man-to-man -man coverage on John Little, and they sent Flagler down the sidelines, and he beat his man. Epley with a nice touch. Good timing pattern. Epley's hit Williams for a 46-yarder, Rulak for a 34-yarder, and connects this time with Flagler out of the backfield. Igwe Buike now prepares for the extra point try. It's up, it's powerful enough, and it is good. So he remains perfect in extra point tries. Clemson 17 to six, let's look at it again. Well, this is interesting because Clemson took, a whole, took the whole first half setting this play up. Flagler's been going down about 10 yards hooking up. This time he just streaks down the sidelines. And John Little couldn't cover him man to man. I don't think anybody can cover Flagler man on man. And a great call by Clemson and a great throw by Epley. Super block by Henry Carter once again as he picked off the left end Andy Loy as he pursued the passer. 17 to 6 Clemson on top of Georgia. Igwe Buike preparing to kick off now after a 70 yard drive in five plays. Capped by the 27 yard touchdown pass Epley to Flagler. Put a good bit into it. And they'll let it roll through. It'll come out to the 20. Andre Smith. Looked like he might have had a chance to run that back, but it was a good five yards deep in the end zone. So the Bulldogs will take over from their own 20-yard line. It's been an interesting first half with several momentum shifts. Started off like Clemson was going to tear away with this ball game. Then Georgia taking advantage of penalties and putting things together defensively. Came back. Only have Clemson now to break out in front 17-6. Todd Williams looking for Archie, and he dumps it short, and it's almost intercepted. Let's see. Yes, it is intercepted. Tyrone Davis, his second interception of the day. Well, his this, third of the season, Kim. Yeah, and the strange, the strange thing about this is Peter Anderson, the center for Georgia, really causes this interception. He's going to peel back and block for Williams, but watch him get in Williams' face, and that causes Williams to float the ball high, and here comes the interception. Tough break for Georgia. So Williams is having a tough day. Three out of 11, four interceptions for only 24 yards through the air, and Ty Davis gets his second interception. So at 216, the Tigers in great field position at the 31. Flagler. Correction, Kenny Flowers fumbles the ball, but he was already down. Maybe let's check it. I think the official said he already had the knee down when the ball popped out. Max Culpepper, the tackler. gains a yard and a half on the play. Let's check the replay now. Stewart trailing from behind. Yes, he was down when the ball popped out. 145 before halftime. Epley not having his best percentage day, that's for sure. Coming into this game, number one pass efficiency wise is four for 12 with one interception, but he does have 76 yards thanks to the long bomb. Now it's third and eight. An important call for the Tigers. Ball resting at the 29-yard line. Epley back to driver. Driver really is corralled, but somehow sneaks through for a yard gain. Little Stacy Driver looks like a bowling ball, and he just kept those legs driving against Bill Mitchell and Knox Culpepper, the two linebackers. And kind of a surprising call, third and eight. Down inside your opponent's 30-yard line, they choose to go off tackle out of the I formation. Now look, they've got... Uh, Igwebuike in the game. They're going to be attempting the field goal. There you see Peretti, number 17, the backup quarterback, the holder for Igwebuike. It's Scott Williams, the snapper from Hickson, Texas. Ball placement at the 33-yard line. It sails high. It is good. So what a kicking game we're seeing here today. Something we anticipated, but with 54 seconds left on the clock, the Tigers put three more on the board. 
Clemson 20, Georgia 6. His longest of 44 yarder, Igwebuike, is two for two in this ball game, and he's getting set to kick off. There's a single safety now as they're anticipating an onside kick after the 44 yard field goal and only 54 seconds on the clock. Jimmy Harrell is standing back on his three yard line, but look at him line up at the 47 and the 40 with some good hands people up there. Wigwike puts it high and Harold goes back to catch it. And he won't run that out. So evidently the Bulldogs were anticipating an onside kick. So the Bulldogs take over first and 10 from their 20 yard line. Trailing at 20 to 6. With almost a minute remaining. Defensively for the Tigers now, it's Walls back in at linebacker. Brown, Danforth, Davis, and Pleasant, the secondary. Gary, a tailback. Williams hands off up the middle and struggling to get to the 24 yard line, almost the 25. Is Andre Smith, the fullback. Henry Walls getting off the pile. Well, you're going to see Georgia just straight ahead, right up the middle. They don't want to make the big mistake down here. There's 28 seconds left. They're letting the clock run. Crawford getting the initial hit there, as we saw in the replay, as it goes back to the tailback. A bulldog loses his helmet up from the trenches as Steve Berlin makes the tackle for the Tigers. 13 seconds, so Coach Vince Dooley of the Georgia Bulldogs content now to run the clock off and start anew in the second half. Kicks down. And that's the end of the first half from Athens, Georgia, with the score. The Clemson Tigers 20, the Georgia Bulldogs 6. Both teams back on the field now as Clemson with a 20 to 6 lead here at halftime. It'll be interesting to see what the Bulldogs have in store. Kevin Butler will be kicking off to begin the second half. You know, Kim McQuilkin, I think it's interesting that of four turnovers by the Georgia Bulldogs, they uh, have not been able to capitalize on those turnovers. Only one has really led to a score for Clemson. Well, one has led to a score. That's correct. But what it's done is really put the field position in, to Clemson's advantage. Uh, even if you don't get a score out of a turnover, it may lead to a score on the next drive or the drive after that because you've been left in good field position. Kevin Butler, whose two field goals account for the six Georgia Bulldog points. Rulak and Williams back on their goal line. Anticipating Butler's kick. Butler comes forward and the second half is underway. A high booming kick into the end zone. Rulak fields it. He will not run it out. So the Tigers will begin their drive on the 20-yard line. Incidentally, the 70-yard touchdown drive by the Clemson Tigers in the first half was their longest of the year. Twice they have moved the ball 69 yards in the two previous games. Twice they've moved it 68 yards. But to have a 70-yard sustained drive against the Bulldogs is quite an accomplishment. Stacy Driver will start the second half at tailback and Kenny Flowers at fullback. Richard Butler at the split end. Ray Williams, your flanker back. And of course, Epley at quarterback. J.D. Dunn shifts to the left side of the line. Stacy Driver gets the call. Beautiful hole. And it uh, bottles up quickly, but he gets to the 25 yard line. Kenny Flowers. It was Driver, who I was looking at, that made the block. And Bill Mitchell made the tackle. And a nice block by the left guard, Steve Reese, that time. Considered the most consistent Clemson lineman. So it'll make it a second and five from the 25 for the Tigers. Epley making sure everyone hears the call. Stacy Driver the tailback. Nice cutback as Georgia had a chance to load up on the outside. It took a little while for that play to develop. Close to the first down though. Well, here we see the toss sweep. 
Driver trying to get to the outside. Flowers out in front of him. Good block by Flowers, but the rest of the Georgia defense pursues well. Inches short of the first down. Third and one at the 29. Epley, the quarterback, he gets the first down, moving over the 30-yard line. Carlisle Hewitt making the tackle. Hewitt with a good first half. He's from Snellville, Georgia, 6'2", 211-pound senior. Already a three-year letterman. Max Culpepper, number 48, looking to the bench for the defensive signals. Clemson with one more first down in Georgia. On Epley's move. From the 20 and the 31 yard line now. Richard Butler and Ray Williams, the wide receivers. Epley taking a lot of time. Can't hold on on the far side. Williams, I believe. Well, Mike Epley had Williams open this time on a five step look in pattern. Really didn't get his feet set the way he'd like to, the way he generally does. Pulled the string a little bit, got an incompletion in the second and ten. This has been a real test for Epley, the first defense that's actually challenged the Tigers. Sheldon Boyer to the far side, Williams to the near side, and Epley barely got the ball away. The exchange is fumbled, and a big break for the Bulldogs at the 30-yard line. Carlisle Hewitt jumps on the football. Well, we are not going to see a smooth exchange between Epley and Flowers. There you see Epley falling down. Looks like he didn't want to give the ball to Flowers, but he took it anyway. And Hewitt comes up with the ball for the Georgia Bulldogs. Looked like a reenactment of the old belly series, where the quarterback actually rides with the fullback up to the line and then gives it to him or takes it back at the last second. Fullback on the carry, Smith. Bangs it down to the 26-yard line, almost to the 25. Billy Georgia just came back with the same play that Clemson fumbled on. They ran it to perfection. Got five Almost good even the turnovers now, Kim. This is the kind of mistake Danny Ford wanted to avoid in this second half. Two of those three fumbles, though, by the Tigers have been deep in their own territory. Second and five at the 25. Back to Tate. Tate short of the first down by a yard. The ball placement actually two yards short of the first down at the 22, where Eldridge Milton makes the tackle. Milton, an experienced linebacker, he had a great game against Georgia last year. 78 stops overall on the season for Milton. But he had 17 tackles against the Bulldogs last year. Well, then Clemson would like to see him make one right here. This is a big third and two. From the 22, Tate does not make the first down. Once again, they might call on Butler as Michael Perry and Eldridge Milton once again combine to clog up that middle. Well, you're going to see a good job by William Perry and Steve Berlin. They double team Steve Berlin. But there's a host of Clemson defenders penetrating into that Georgia backfield. They've got a fourth and one now, Art. And Dooley's going to go for it. Fourth and one at the 21-yard line. Tate. He's got the first down inside the 20 to the 19. Steve Berlin at the bottom of the pack. We're going to see a good surge here by Jimmy Holt, number 66, the right guard. Mike Weaver, the right tackle, number 63. Here it is. Holt comes down, double-teaming William Perry. Just enough room there for the first down. Holton and Anderson on the double-team there, and Weaver was able to get a nice block on the outside, as you mentioned. First and ten now. The Bulldogs at the 19-yard line of Clemson. Tate. Nice adjustment on the far side by Dwayne Meadows and then Eldridge Milton, the linebacker. Hey. 
Michael Perry on number 91 you'll see also in on the play. So Georgia tries a misdirection here. Making right coming back to their left. Michael Perry really stays at home. Does not go with the flow. And makes a nice play. Jeff Wells also in there. Second and 11 now from the 20 yard line. Key series for the Bulldogs. Williams has his man in the open. Archie can't get it to him. He had a nice move on Ronald Watson. Watson with decent position, but Archie had had the angle. Williams just couldn't get him the ball. Didn't drill it. Herman Archie went down in the end zone, made a move to his outside. Williams on the run just couldn't put the ball on him. Three for 12. Only 24 yards through the air. There we see Todd Williams. He's got good protection. Floats the ball just a little bit. Herman Archie wide open, and I'm sure Todd Williams would like that ball back. If Williams would have snapped that ball off when Archie made the cut, that could have been a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Third and 11. He's going to lob for the corner to Archie again. Touchdown! This one over Tyrone Davis. because he came right back and throws the touchdown pass. Tyrone Davis got himself out of position right at the line of scrimmage. Clemson came up in a bump and run. Here's Georgia throwing the fade. Herman Archie just takes one step and then goes back to the outside, and Tyrone never got himself adjusted. Couldn't see the football, and Archie came back to make the touchdown. Looked like a good play call from the press box, the coaching box. Well, that's exactly right, because Clemson came right up with everybody on the line of scrimmage. Kevin Butler for the try for the extra point. It is up, and it is good. So the Bulldogs here in the second half make a move to get back into the ball game. Williams just a three-step drop to his right and lets it go. There you see Davis is already beat. Archie's got to come back for the ball. Nice catch. Herman Archie has four inches on Tyrone Davis anyway. Plus the fine move he made. Archie is six foot five. So with 10 04 remaining third quarter, it's Clemson 20, Georgia 13. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Archie Williams, 20 yard reception. Capped a time of possession drive of three minutes and three seconds. Moving the ball after the fumble, 30 yards in seven plays. So the turnover proving costly to the Tigers as Kevin Butler prepares to kick off. It'll be short. Rulak, number 15, fighting with Williams. It's Rulak from the five. He only gets out to the 16-yard line. And so Clemson. The momentum shifted back to the Georgia side of the field. You know, credit Vince Dooley. He had a fourth and one, and it was a fourth and long one. But he felt he had to do something to turn this game around, and he went for it. He felt he had the momentum to make the first down, and he was right and came out of the drive with a touchdown. This is a new ball game, Art. Sellout capacity crowd. Equaling the number here in Athens, Georgia, back in 81. Largest crowd ever to see a Clemson football game. From the 16, the Tigers with a first and 10. They try it with Flagler. Flagler with a gain of three after Knox Culpepper made the hit. Well, you can really feel that home field advantage coming into play now as the crowd gets behind Georgia. Georgia sitting in their standard four-man defensive front. Flagler, who hasn't lost a yard so far this season, averaging 7.9, could get only three that time. Epley tucks it under. Not the first down. He'll be a few yards shy as he moves the ball to the 23-yard line. Donald Chumley comes to make the tackle. Well, this is a good play by Epley. You're going to see him fake to his dive back. Not too much he could do with this ball. Georgia had it strung out. He just cuts it up and gets what he can. That's good positive yardage. He's at least got his team in position now for a third and two. Key third down play for the Tigers. From the 23. The pitch back. 
First down, penalty though. Under the wide receiver cutting across. Might have been an illegal block. Let's check it. Epley waiting on the delay before flipping it to Flagler. I think he may be right. Richard Butler was out there, number 19. He, he may have come back illegally. Here's Epley again. He's looking at that defensive end. He's got to pitch it early. Flagler's in pretty good shape. We saw the block come in there. Couldn't really see the point of contact, but they're going to call clipping. So the brakes are going the Bulldogs' way, and it's because they're making their own brakes. There we go. Let's see if we can see Butler come into the lower left-hand corner of our screen here. Right there, there's the block. He hit him from behind, and they're going to bring it back. Clemson has been penalized 77 yards with eight penalties in this ball game. George has been able to hold their penalties at 50 yards assessed against them in the first half. Danny Ford shaking his head. 8.37 in the third quarter now is his third and 14 from the 12. Epley, the pass, gets it through the arms of Dunn. Dunn was tied up on the play if we see the replay. Well, Dunn didn't like it, but Georgia did a good job at the line of scrimmage. They're going to come out and fake the option. They want to make this look like the option, and Epley's going to set up, look for the throwback to his tight end. But he was tied up at the line of scrimmage by number 39, Andy Lloyd. Hatcher, from his own end zone, gets a high hang time. Fair catch, called for at the 46-yard line. Woo! Kevin Harris, a Florida boy, calls for the fair catch. Eight minutes, 24 seconds remaining, third quarter. The Bulldogs taking over as Clemson leads at 20 to 13. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. From the 45, Tate, there's William Perry, a tackle for a loss. There was an interesting quote in the Atlanta Constitution the other day. In that it mentioned that number 66 in your program is William Perry for Clemson. The blip on your radar scope is just near Hartwell Lake. <laughs> and that's William Perry. 320 pounds. That's paraphrasing. Second and 12. William's back. He's got his man Archie. Fumbles the ball, picks it up luckily, and makes it down to the 30-yard line. Incompleted pass, they're going to say. I thought he had it long enough. But, of course, we weren't looking from the same direction that the official was. He was well, looking the, right in on it. You're right, but this is a tough call. There you see Clemson jumping off sides. Play action pass. Williams sets up nicely. He's got good time. Let's it go down the middle to Archie. Oh boy, looks like he took a step with that ball, but he's got his back to us, and it's hard to see if he was juggling or not. Tough break for Georgia. 3.23 in the third quarter. Lane's at the slot to the left of the line on a third and 12 from the 43. Williams has good protection. He's got his man Archie again. First down. One-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. And Reggie Pleasant had to finally come up to help out. Well, I'll tell you, Todd Williams may have done some growing up on this play because he's on a, on a roll to his left. He let this ball go way before Archie made his break. He showed the confidence in his receiver and the confidence in their timing to let it go before the man even made his break. And that's the reason for the completion in the first down. A big play by Todd Williams that time. 30, 37 yards in receptions now for Herman Archie on a first and 10 from the 40. Tate stacked up at the 35 after a gain of four. Greg Crawford, number 49, another tackle. Penalty flag down on the field. Let's check it. No, there is no penalty flag. So Georgia will have a second and five from the 35. Looking much sharper on offense. The one thing that college and pro coaches look for is a quarterback that can throw that out ball because it takes a lot of anticipation and a lot of confidence, and Williams did it extremely well in that last play. Archie split to the far side on the second and five. Tate, the ball carrier. Beautiful block. 
Tate first down, 20-yard line. Tyrone Davis will tackle. They collapse that side of the line. Well, that's exactly right. Lars Tate's a big back. He's 6'2", 215, but look how quickly he gets into the secondary. No one touches him. Tyrone Davis finally making the stop. Tate coming off the field after 13 carries, 50 yards. His finest day in college. It's only a freshman. Two minutes now left in the third period. The Bulldogs on the drive at the 20-yard line. Fullback on the carry. He slips through McCluskey. David McCluskey from Rome, Georgia, only a sophomore. But he's 215 pounds of powerful driving legs. Finally, Steve Berlin makes the tackle. And a great job by Mac Burrells that time, the left guard. Just straight ahead, man-on-man -man blocking. Second down and two at the 12. Bulldogs coming back here in a good third quarter. The tailbacks got the leverage. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Watson ran him out there. Along with Andy Johnson. Tron Jackson on the toss. And look at the speed this junior has. Great job staying in bounds down the sideline. Great balance. Tron Jackson, number 25. He was off the team for a spell. Decided he didn't want to play. Came back, worked his way up through the scout team. First down and goal. Bulldogs knocking on the door. Touchdown! Cleveland, Gary, number 36, scores for the Bulldogs. And now Kevin Butler will come in with a chance to tie here in the third quarter. to see Cleveland Gary over right guard. He's a freshman, 6'2", 219. Barreling his way into the end zone and really Georgia taking something out of the Clemson playbook, coming at you with a bevy of running backs on this drive. And it's paid off for them. Anderson the snapper, Harrell will hold for Butler. 1.13 on the clock, third quarter. Butler puts it up and it is good. We've got a tied great ball game at Athens, Georgia, with the score, Clemson 20, Georgia 20. We'll be right back after these words. Ball placement on the 24, it'll be second and six. Flagler and Flowers, the running backs, is done, shifts to the near side. Epley on the option. Tucks it under. He won't tip, pitch it back this time. He learned the first time, but he fumbles. Loose football. And Georgia again recovers. Well, you just don't figure a Mike Epley to come in here and commit the kind of turnovers he's made today. He makes a great move here on the option to his left. He's going to turn it up. He sees the Georgia defense strung out. He makes a cut back here, and there it is. Number 31 for Georgia. Jeff Sanchez gets his hand in there on the ball and knocks it free. Georgia comes Charlie, up with it. I believe, picked up the loose football for Calvin Ruff. It's first and 10 Bulldogs at the 45. A great break. We'll see if they can convert. They've been able to so far the second half, breaking into the open. The fullback, Andre Smith. Good yardage over the 45, approaching the 40. Tyrone Davis finally called upon to make the stop. 9.21 remaining in this ball game, and the Bulldogs have dominated the second half. Well, here you're going to see Andre Smith right up the middle. That's a big gainer on first down. Gary the tailback now from the 43. Henry Walls made the stop on him. Gary really couldn't get going, but he did get good yardage up to the 40-yard line. So Clemson now has turned the ball over seven times, but it's really beginning to hurt. Georgia turned it over four times out of the five turnovers they have in the first half but only one time did it result in any points. 
But Georgia has been able to take their turnovers from Clemson and score. Second and seven from the 40. Gary. He makes it to the 35, close to the first down. They'll probably spot the ball back a bit. Eldridge Milton, the tackle. Well, you really get the feeling that the Georgia offense has the Clemson defense off balance right now. Here's the handoff. Doesn't look like much, but when you're getting three, four, five yards of pop, and you're looking at third and twos, those are a lot easier to convert than third and eights. Two tight ends in the ball game. O'Leary to the far side. Gary the pitch. He's got the first down. Eldridge Milton the tackle. So the Georgia Bulldogs on the move once again. Is a toss sweep to Georgia's left. Cleveland Gary just enough for the first down. Georgia's got the mo. Perry that time went one on one with Anderson the center. First and ten from the 31 yard line. Freddie Lane in motion. Hand off to Gary and there was a mix up back there as the blocking came right back into the ball. Michael Perry forcing the action. That time Peter Anderson ended up near the handoff from his center spot. Well, and the mix up was William Perry knocking everybody back two or three steps allowing his brother Michael to come in and make the play. Tate's the tailback. He gets the pitch and fumbles it has to fall on it at the 35 yard line so it's right at the line of scrimmage. Toss was a little bit behind him, I think, Kim. Well, it's too bad because they had a big hole on the left side. They had the corner. Just couldn't hang on to it. Michael Perry going for the quarterback off that end and uh, relying on Kenny Danforth to come up and secure the tackle. Third and 14 from the 35. A pitch back to Tron Jackson rolled out of bounds Ronald Watson at the 28 yard line making the tackle let's take a look at the yardage in this ball game Georgia now 303 yards Clemson 240 yards and obviously what Vince Dooley was doing on that last play at third and 14 normally a toss sweep would be kind of a conservative Perhaps an unusual call, but when you've got a kicker like Kevin Butler and you've got the score tied 20 to 20 with 609 remaining, he's thinking field goal. Well, as he proved in a 51 yarder earlier in the ball game, he's got the leg for it. It's a howitzer. It is good. Kevin Butler breaks the tie. It's embraced by Mike Cavan, their assistant coach, as he comes off the field and gets set for the kickoff. Kevin Butler puts Georgia ahead for the first time in this ball game. The 6:03 remaining, Georgia 23, Clemson 20. We'll pause now for word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. They only had the ball three minutes 26 seconds, went 29 yards with it. Kevin Butler. Williams in the end zone will not run it out, so Clemson takes over from their 20. What a turnaround here in the second half. Well, it really has been. It's been all Georgia, and really they've done it on the ground. Vince Dooley's concern at the beginning of the season was his inexperienced offensive line, but in the second half here, they've done a great job against a very tough Clemson defensive line. Well, they were more than satisfied with the performance in their first game of the season, Southern Mississippi. Then they had a week off, as Clemson did, to prepare for this game. Epley out of the backfield. That's Flowers. And he's met hard there, close to a first down at the 30. Good play call for the Clemson Tigers as they had a big rush on. Well, I like this play call by Clemson on first down. Straight drop back pass. It's a possession type pass. Swinging the back out of the backfield. Epley gets a chance to put the ball right on the numbers. 
They move the chains. A good first down call. Greg Waters the hit for Georgia. And from the 30 now with a first down. Flowers. Gets around the linebacker. Can't get any good yardage though. Penalty flag is down. It might be a holding call. Well here you see the Georgia linebackers. Culpepper and Mitchell. Mitchell's going to come up. He's going to get a part of the ball carrier. Good play. They weren't full. That was a draw play. Georgia didn't bite on it. I couldn't see on that replay or not, but there was a hold at the line. One of the Bulldogs crediting Engel with the hold. But it sets the ball back to the 20-yard line. Clemson down by three with 526 remaining in this contest. Oh, is it hard to win between these hedges? Danny Ford knows better than anyone. He has not won here yet. 87 yards in penalties for Clemson. Well, it's extremely hard to win anywhere when you commit seven turnovers. That's true. Clemson has only won one game and 16 tries before this game. Dumps it off to Stacy Driver. Driver, a nice, nice sidestep at the 25. So that'll get some of the yardage back. Well, the most impressive part of the Georgia defense today has been its secondary. They've done a great job of covering the receivers downfield. Epley wants to go downfield on this play, but instead he has to go to a safety valve. Stacy Driver is one of those few backs that can turn a safety valve play into a 15-yard gain. So it'll be second, almost back to the original line of scrimmage. They're calling it second and 10 from the 30. Epley. And he goes to a KD Dunn. Here we got a situation, Kim, where the linebackers are so far back, they're daring uh, the Tigers to throw underneath them. Well, that's exactly right. Georgia was back in almost a prevent type defense that time. Playing a zone, KD Dunn just went down a few yards, hooked up. They would have liked to see KD keep his feet, maybe get a few extra yards out of that, but he had to come back to catch the ball. A big three. And about three and a half yards to go for a first down. It's a long three. Let's see if they can convert it. You see the scoring there by quarters, but we've got a more important situation right here. At the 37-yard line, Epley. Can he get it around? He pitches back. Driver's got the first down. Nicely executed that time by Epley. Well, a great play by Epley this time. They go to the short side of the field. They run the option. As soon as he gets away from the center, he's got a, he's eyeballing that defensive end. Here he comes down the line, fakes the pitch once, turns it inside, keeps his poise, gets a good pitch, pitch off the driver. And Tony Flack's got to make the play before driver, after driver picks up the first down. Flack riding a block by Cheatham very, very well to make the play. And coming off the field is Lloyd, the left end, Andy Lloyd from Knoxville, Tennessee. So Calvin Rupp comes in in his job. Hewitt and Chumley defensively now at the end spots for Georgia. Epley throws behind his intended receiver. And that was Terrence Flagler. Well, Georgia was in a two-deep zone in this play. There you see the two safeties in the middle of the football field. They're going to double team on the outside, both wide receivers. Flagler's going to come down the middle, which is where you want to attack that two-deep zone. But Epley's a little late with the ball and behind him. They've got a second and ten. Everybody floating back defensively. Good defensive call that time by the Bulldogs. Second and ten from the 45-yard line. The deep drop. He's got his man. Williams, I believe. Let's check it when he comes out of that pile. Ray Williams completes the pass. Well, this is At a the good, 46, a first down. Excuse me, Art. This is a good throw and a good catch. Epley straight back in the pocket. He's going to have the time he needs to throw the ball. The real test of a wide receiver is how do you catch the ball coming across the middle? Ray Williams answers that question right here as he catches the ball in traffic enough for the first down. And the clock continues to tick. 3-18 remaining in this ball game. 23 to 20, Georgia by three. First and 10 from the 43. Epley looking long, throws it up dangerously. Can't get to the ball. Butler, Richard Butler. Penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Ditch against Georgia this time. Let's see what they've got. Face mask. Right up.
up near the line of scrimmage. It looked like maybe one of the defenders trying to use the face mask to get in on Epley. Well, Clemson gambled that time. They took a shot, went for the bomb. Not a bad decision with, th with 3.05 left in the game. They've got to think in terms of a touchdown to win this game. Epley. Look at the time Epley's got. His offensive line doing a good job for him. So it'll be first and six after the face mask. Rulak is the lone wide receiver. Stacy Driver to the wing on the near side. Correction, we got Boyer on this side too. Straight up the middle, nice hole as he steps over one uh, tackler, Kenny Flowers. Calvin Root made the tackle. Flowers adjusting nicely on this run. Well, this play develops just like the option play. Notice that time Flowers bumping into Epley. Their timing has not been good all afternoon. Earlier, they fumbled on that same play. Engel with the block, first and ten now from the 32-yard line. The Tigers moving on a very difficult Bulldog defense. Bulldogs have shut them out in the latter moments of this ball game. Epley lobbing one for Ray Williams. He uh, impossible to get to. Epley ends up on his backside. Great rush by Donald Chumley. Oh, and you wondered what Epley was signaling to his backs behind him right before the snap. He pulled his hand away and gave him a sign. Perhaps one of the backs forgot the count and asked him what it was. He might have flashed two fingers back there for him, but they went for the bomb again. And uh, good coverage by the Georgia defense. Epley's been able to break games open with that bomb in the past, the first two games of the season. Threw a nice long win in this one. But right now, his club is trailing by three with 2.30 on the clock. Epley steps up. Almost intercepted. If it hadn't been for KD down, it would have been. Calvin Roof. From his left end spot, rode with KD Dunn. Well, George is back in their two deep zone again, doubling the wide receivers. The place to go is go for the tight end down the middle. That's what Epley does, but Calvin Roof is all over him. And KD makes a good defensive play to break up the interception. Third and ten, Art. Big one now for Clemson. You go for field goal positioning. 2.23 remaining. You've got 10 yards to go for a first down. Third and 10. They're going for the first down now. Defense slacks back. Epley out of the pocket. Nice receiver coming back, but he drops the ball. KD done with a sure first down. Did everything right, but didn't catch the ball. When he saw Epley in trouble, he started coming back. Well, that's exactly right. At the snap of the ball, Epley reads the coverage, and he wanted to go to his tight end in the middle of the field. But the coverage was on him, so after he moves, Dunn makes a move to the outside, gets himself open, and comes up with everything but the ball. Donald Igwebuike now. Last year at Clemson, it was Butler that came in with seconds remaining to tie the game at 16. Now Igwe Buike trying to tie it at 23. Kick is up. It's long enough. It is Stop. good. Donald Igwe Buike ties this ball game with two minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Well, just an incredible finish to this game, and we still got two minutes and 10 seconds left. But what a great clutch kick by Igwe Buike. There you see the score, Georgia 23, Clemson 23. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Igwe Buike's 48-yard field goal, capping 12 plays, moving the ball 48 yards to tie the game at 23. Boy, it's difficult in this one, isn't it? Trying to pick a player of the if game. If you had to play a, pick a player of the game with a, such a close performance, I might go with Tony Flack out of the defensive secondary. He's had a great game. That whole Georgia secondary has been tough. Igwe Buike. It bounces in the end zone, and so they'll put it out at the 20. What a great dead hop it took in the end zone. 
And then you've got to think about Igwebuike being the most valuable player as yes. well. Yes, absolutely. We might have to give it to Butler and Iggy. The Bulldogs still with two minutes, ten seconds on the clock. They've got 80 yards to try to break the tie. Tron Jackson, the tailback. He's got lots of speed. Williams quickly over to Lane. Fred Lane makes it to the 24-yard line. Before Kenny Danforth puts a helmet to him. Milton also in on the stop. Let's take a look, Jim. Well, Williams on the roll to his right. Nice catch over the head. He gets the ball in the hands. That's the important thing. And they've got some yardage, but they need bigger chunks than that. On the second and six from the 24, releases it to his back. Tron Jackson. First down, Yardy. Jeff Wells, number 88, to make the stop. Well, this is a slip screen. To George's left side, Tron Jackson's going to get the ball in the backfield. He's got Mac Burrows out in front of him. Peter Anderson out there as well. Good yardage. Archie to the near side, Lane to the far side. First down at the 31-yard line. Williams gets the big rush. Incompleted pass to the near side. Intended for Archie with Terrence Mack covering on Archie. And Michael, Michael Perry. Perry really came hard on Williams. Really disrupt the timing of this play. Michael Perry does. We'll see the play action pass. I don't think anybody's going for that fake at this point in the ball game. Look at Williams just letting it go as Perry hits him. All week long, Vince Dooley saying how his inexperienced club doesn't match up well, but you never know in this series. Danny Ford not buying any of that, of course. And they've just shown why. Oh, what an up. Let them look out. What a game-saving tackle by Tyrone Davis. Tron Jackson. Well, I mentioned on the last play that nobody was going for the play fake. This time, no one was playing the run. All the Clemson linemen upfield on the pass rush. Tron Jackson all by himself. And what a great game-saving tackle. Tyrone Davis. Well, there's still a minute left, actually 59 seconds. Williams out to Fred Lane. Blue Fingers is horse collared by Elbridge Milton, number 87. Is complete, 46, the clock is continuing to move. Georgia has one more timeout. Second and nine at the 44. Lane to the far side, and it's Archie to the near side. Georgia needs at least one more substantial gain. They're going for it all. Going for Freddie Lane. He can't get to the football. What a great try, though. Tyrone Davis on him. Well, Todd Williams makes a great throw here. Gets a lot of power into it, Jim. A straight drop back pass. A little play fake there. He's got good time. Now, look at the time he's got. Let's it go. You want to put this ball on the receiver's outside shoulder. That's where it's coming down. Fred Lane had a shot at it. Would have been a great catch, but a nice throw by Todd Williams. You know, I'm not sure that he might not have been looking up into a sunshine effect there. You're right. When trying to search for the football. Well, 23 Kevin, seconds on the clock. Osborne to the far side. Kevin Butler's longest field goal is 59 yards. Timeout is called by Williams. 23-23 with 23 seconds remaining on the clock in this ball game. What a magnificent series this has been, Kim. With Georgia in the last 10 years winning only one more game than Clemson and one game a tie. And that was last year. Will this one become a tie? Well, the dogs are going to try to prove that they can do it on a third and nine from the 44. Williams looking for Osborne. Catches it, but it was out of bounds. Well, it's fourth down. They're going to have to try and kick it. This is going to be a 61-yard attempt, guard. There are very 
few kickers in the country who would have a shot at this, but Kevin Butler happens to be one of them. Kevin Butler. Ball placement at the 51. Harold's the holder. Anderson the snapper. It looks like it might be fair enough. It's good. Unbelievable. Still 11 seconds on the clock. Unbelievable. Not only was it good, it was good by at least five yards. He had the wind going with him, and he got it up a strong leg, and he fired it over the crossbar. Well, Kevin Butler kicked a field goal last year to tie this game with 38 seconds left. Comes back and kicks a 61-yard field goal to put the Bulldogs ahead 26-23. Now, Igwe Buike's got the win going in front of him. He's got a headwind, but he still's got 11 seconds. If Clemson could get a run back well, or afraid, a good first play. I'm afraid their only hope is to get the run back. You know that Butler's going to nail this kickoff back into the end zone, so there probably won't be a great chance for a return. They're officially marking it as a 60-yard field goal for that young man, Kevin Butler, who already holds the record in the ACC for the most field goals. Well, there is we, the replay. There we see the ball is well beyond the 50-yard line, so it's over 60 yards. Butler really gets into it. He kept his head down. That's the key to those long ones, and look at this. He knows he's got it. It's got to be the biggest field goal of that man's career. Well, Danny Ford warned everyone uh, not to uh, take Vince Dooley's comments too seriously about the inexperience. He says uh, that's probably the same kind of information General Custer got before he went down to Little Bighorn. And the fans here, 82,000 strong, are going crazy. 26 to 23. Georgia and Clemson. We haven't seen this many points in a game between these two in some time. Butler may kick this kickoff out of Athens. Squib kick. Williams bobbling it. Has good blocking in front of him. Now he passes across the field. It's fumbled. Picked up by Rulak. Rulak with good running room. He's to the 45, 40, and out of bounds. Time runs out. Well, this is a great effort by Clemson. I'll tell you, I think there's some question as the Clemson's arguing there was one second left when he ran out of bounds. The officials are getting together on it. I looked at the clock and it looked to me like there was time left on the clock as he got out of bounds. It looked like there was time to me, uh, but it's pretty hard to tell when he stepped out from across the field. Danny Ford interested in the decision, of course, because Igwe Buike would have a chance. Clemson tried the lateral, throwing a backward pass is legal on the kickoff. Danny Ford stating his case. <laughs> Evidently, the decision has been made. At least the crowd thinks so. There's Vince Dooley and Danny Ford. Well, Danny Ford's going to say home field advantage. <laughs> well, he sure is. Rulak was out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. And Georgia has upset the University of Clemson 26-23 on a 60-yard field goal by Kevin Butler.